This is the Diamond Hogs Podcast with Mason Choate and Robert Stewart. Welcome to the Diamond Hogs Podcast. I am your host, Mason Choate, joined as always by my co-host, Robert Stewart. It's been a long time since we talked to everybody. The last episode we recorded was the, the night that Arkansas lost to Ole Miss in Omaha to get sent home. Uh, since then, Ole Miss went on to win the College World Series, uh, swept Oklahoma 2 nothing. Well, is that technically a sweep? They just won two games. It is a sweep. It is. Okay. The Um, other team won zero games. That's a sweep. Okay. So uh, you lost to the eventual national champions. I know that a lot of people don't like to brag about that or say that that, that's not really, you know, a flex. But you did beat them in Omaha. You're the only team that beat them in the postseason. And uh, they went on to beat probably the second hottest team. I guess Arkansas could have been the second hottest team in the College World Series. But – uh, they beat Oklahoma, who was playing really good baseball. Put it that way. But this is yeah. the Diamond Hawks podcast, not the Diamond Rebels podcast, Robert. So we're going to talk about the Diamond Hawks. Yeah, I mean, Dave Dave kind of alluded to that in his in his press conference on Thursday. Like, you know, I mean, the Hawks were hot, right? But they just ran into the one team that was hotter. Yeah, and That's how it goes for those for those wondering why it took us so long to record this episode, which is. It's kind of like a season recap, but not exactly because we're not going to go through the entire season. Because if you if you want that, you can go back and listen to all of our episodes throughout the season. We did two episodes a week. Go find it. Um, the reason we waited was for that Dave Van Horn press conference, which was on Thursday. We're recording this Friday morning, and uh, you know it was more of a moving forward press conference. Uh, a lot of questions about transfers. What's the roster going to look like? Is Connor Nolan coming back? Uh, Zach Morris, is he going to get drafted? Stuff like that. Less of, I think, the only time that we talked about, you know, the the 2022 team was at the end when everything was over and Dave was like, hold on, I want to say something. And so. Yeah, he, he had a closing statement instead of an opening statement this time. Yeah. So that was that was a little weird, but also it's like, if you're going to wait until July 7th to have this press conference, then what do you want us to talk about? You know, it's like the season's over. We don't have, we've already written all our stories about how this season went. You know, we're not going to, we're not going to write a season recap story. We're not going to record a season recap episode, which is technically what this is, but not exactly. And so that's, I, I just felt like I had to explain all that because some people might be confused as to why we didn't have one. That's why it's right now. And uh, that's why we're probably not going to go through every single series of the season. We'll talk about, you know, our MVPs for the season, just overall thoughts, stuff like that. But, um, Robert, before we get to it, want to remind everybody about the Hit That Line podcast network. We are uh, available on the Hit That Line podcast network. And that's where you can get the Diamond Hawks podcast. You can get Trusting the Process with Ty Richardson. You can listen to the podcast that they turn their radio shows each day into, including the morning rush and halftime and uh, go to hit that line.com or at hit that line AR on Twitter. And you can also just type in hit that line, wherever you get your podcast, you'll find us there and you'll find all those other podcasts and hogbeat.com announcement. For those who don't know, I am now managing editor over at hogbeat.com. Andrew Hutchinson has moved on to a different website. Um, And so very happy for him and his family and uh, excited about the future of Hogbeat. One of my stipulations for taking the job was that I would bring on this guy here, Robert Stewart. And so glad to have him along. He's going to be doing some baseball stuff, some football stuff with us. And uh, we got a lot of stuff in store. Very excited. And uh, obviously the Diamond Hawks podcast will continue to be available on the Hogbeat YouTube. And, uh, you know, moving forward, it's going to be available on the Hogbeat Podcast Network, which is going to be a new thing. And so for those who enjoy listening to the Diamond Hawks podcast and you're a Razorback fan, not just of baseball, but of football and basketball, we have stuff in store for you and recruiting as well. So just be on the lookout for that. Be, make sure that you're subscribed to hogbeat.com. Make sure you're checking hogbeat.com. And uh, we'll have some more listening uh, availability for other sports for you through the Hogbeat Podcast Network. Robert, we're excited about that, are we not? I'm I'm thrilled. I, I'm very excited to officially be part of the team. You know, I've, I've sort of been there helping out here and there, but uh, it's, I mean, couldn't be happier for you personally. I mean, you you are 
the, I think the best choice to, to lead this website and uh, it's, it's going to be fun. So like Mason said, make sure you're subscribed. Yes. Subscribe to hogbeat.com. Um, <clears throat> when football season is, you know, getting geared up and ready to start, we'll have some deals for people um, as far as, you know, saving some money on that subscription. So, but as of now, the goal is to, you know, get, get set up with the site, make sure that I know how everything runs, which I've been working for Hogbeat for almost a year now. So I know how things run, but it's, you know, getting in this managing editor position. Once I get that figured out, then we'll get some deals for everybody to subscribe because you want this, you want this content. Like the premium content that I've had is a uh, pretty good stuff. I'm just, I'm, I'm going to read through it real quick because I've had some really good baseball stuff up. I don't want to like brag on myself, but uh, just today on Friday, put out a story on Cody Frank, why he chose Arkansas, really good stuff from him, transfer pitcher from Nebraska. He was a great, a great conversation. I, I enjoyed talking to him very much. His story is really interesting. Had one JUCO offer out of high school and he didn't even take it. He went somewhere else and got an academic scholarship wasn't even a pitcher. He was a, a utility player and then turned into a pitcher only when his first start in junior college, he threw a complete game shutout. So pretty cool story. You can go read that over at hogbeat.com. I've also got uh, the turnover for the lineup and for the pitching staff. And that includes breakdowns of each guy that's coming in, each guy that's leaving. So, um, and then also your off season transfer tracker. If you want to keep up with that, that's over at hogbeat.com, H-A-W-G-B-E-A-T.com. Okay, I think I think that's it. We get are are we good? Did I hit everything. We don't have any sponsors I, I so. for this episode. So okay. Um so as we mentioned, not doing a full season recap. Like that, that's not that's not something we're gonna do. It would make no sense for us to do that. But I think we can kind of wrap this up in a bow and give our general thoughts. And I'll let you go first, Robert. Um, because I kind of want to see what you're gonna say and then base what I'm gonna say off of that. Okay. Um, well, I haven't really prepared anything. I just, I mean, I keep thinking back to, to how we were feeling at the end of the run in Omaha, right? Um, it was like, we just got to witness three, four weeks of really, really fun baseball after watching a team that looked doomed. Um, I mean, I, I'm, I'm trying to think of like things we could go here. Like my, my moment of the year is probably the the Jalen Battles Grand Slam in Stillwater in that 20 to 12 five hour game. Um, I mean, that to the, the, it was just, it was such a roller coaster. The, the whole game was, um, the, the whole regional was, they, they were playing legitimate competition for the first time since, I don't know. I mean, it was, it was crazy, right? Cause we're the, the, the whole, you know, first month it was like, here are all these really good teams that Arkansas is going to play. And then they all started dropping out of the rankings. Right. And then finally they get the number seven team and they look like they're doomed and they emerge. And then they go to the number 10 team. They beat them. They go to Omaha. I, I don't know. Uh, I just, that was, that was such a fun June. And I, I didn't think it would get more fun than June, 2021, but June, 2022 lasted a little longer. And that was a whole lot of fun. Yeah, I, I mean, I have to say I was very, very happy that we were able to make the trip to Omaha. Um, crazy trip, you know, hotels. We were in a different hotel basically every night. The one hotel that we stayed in for multiple nights was just a complete dump. It was it, it was imagine a hotel from like the 1980s, but it just sat there for 30 years. That's what it was. And so um, and then we went back there. We did go back there and it was better the second time around. We will say that, but it was just, it, you know, that adds to the experience. That's a story that we're able to tell. And uh, Omaha was great. Spent a lot of time at the ballpark at Charles Schwab field, which I think that's starting to come off the tongue a little bit better now that we said it so many times, but at, at the beginning it was like, this is TD, TD Ameritrade. It's not Charles Schwab field. It did not feel right, but now it feels a little bit better. You know, do you agree? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I, I hear what you're saying. Um, so talking moment of the year, I don't want to be that guy, but I'm going to steal this from Will McIntyre because even if he didn't say it, I would probably say it myself. Zach Morris coming in and closing that game against Ole Miss down in Omaha in the ninth bases loaded after Brady Tiger plunked a couple of guys 
I mean, I don't like to let the fan in me show, but I'm a I'm born and raised in Arkansas, grew up diehard Hogs fan, and I've really tried my hardest to become like that neutral guy. I'm going to report on this team with without bias, and for the most part, I do. But when I was sitting in that press box watching that game, my heart was pounding, and I was just like, I'm not ready for this team to lose. <laughs> and so for him to do what he did to close down that game, I mean, just absolute balls of steel, man. I mean, that guy, to go from – and it's so weird. We've talked about this, you know, from the beginning of the season, where you were at, where the pitching staff was at, to where they were at the end of the season when Zach Morris is the guy closing a game down, that important game in Omaha. It just – it doesn't – it, it it's almost like you would you wouldn't have said that before the season. You wouldn't have said that Will McIntyre would have given you two incredible starts in the postseason um, to almost put you into a national championship. And so, I thought that that moment was my moment of the year because there was no other moment throughout the season where my heart was pounding like that, and it, I felt like it just the stake the stakes. There were no higher stakes than that, in my opinion especially coming off his start against Ole Miss, you know, the, the two days before that the, the, the turnaround for him to redeem himself like that was incredible. And, you know, we talked about it on that post game episode, how Ole Miss was looking down in the dumps after that loss, because they, they were on the verge of coming back and advancing to the the finals. And yet they come out the next day and do it anyway. But um, yeah, I mean, I, I remember you, t- you talked about you don't want the season to end. I remember when they lost to Ole Miss the first time. <laughs> you, had, you had trouble processing that tomorrow could be our last day. Yeah, I was I was not ready to leave Omaha, you know. It was like because you don't want to show up, like get so excited about going on this trip to Omaha and watching baseball, and then your team goes 0-2 and you're gone by Monday. You know, that's – that was worst case scenario. I'm glad that that didn't happen. They won the first game. So we were staying until at least Tuesday and then they, they lost to Ole Miss. And I was like, Holy crap, this is not good. Um, eventually they stayed until what Thursday we can't, we went home on Friday morning. Okay. Mm-hmm. Um, so, yeah, but I guess talking about moments throughout the season, Brady Slavin's walk off against North Carolina. That was incredible. That's another moment where it's like, I mean, I guess that that could be that could rival the the Zach Morris one. It just didn't feel like it felt like Arkansas was always going to win that game. In my opinion, it, it, that was the rain delay game, right? Yes, two of them. So that one, it's it was just it was such a weird game, man, because of the rain delays. That and and, and you also have to add in the fact that Arkansas still had another chance. There there was a third game to be played if they didn't win that one. So. Um, that, that moment didn't feel as big because you're sitting there thinking, okay, if they lose this, we still got another game tomorrow. And so I, that's just why I don't have that one above Zach Moore. So I think that would probably be my number two. I really like the Jalen battles grand slam, but it's like that, that game, they won that 20, 20 to 12. So it's like in the grand scheme of things, yes, that hit was incredible. Yes. The ball still probably hasn't landed, but that, that hit they were going to win that game with with or without that hit well didn't didn't it make it 16 to 12 uh I th- mm, i'll pull up the box score i got it right here because it was it was right after the the third baseman came in and walked all those guys to tie the game and then the bases were loaded for the next guy uh let's see maybe it says it in the recap bah, 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 boom. <laughs> Uh, hey, well, while, you're, while you're checking on this, unless you have it right now. Um, oh, here we go. Okay. After Moore drew a bases loaded walk to push Arkansas's cushion to two, Battles punished the first pitch he saw from Oklahoma State reliever Trevor Martin for a grand slam to extend the lead to 16 to 10. So it was 12 to 10. Oh, it was 12 to 10. Okay. Yeah. That's that's a fair point. Um, here's, here's a question for you. Now that Ole Miss has won the title, does the Kendall Diggs walk off move up in your mind at all? That was one that I thought of. I, I mean, because that was just an incredible moment, you know, the, the, the teammates meeting him at home plate, the shirt comes off, you know, that was her jersey, not shirt. Sorry, I'm sorry. Um, that was a great moment. 
I thought that 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 is definitely up there as far as moments of the season. I mean, that's top five in my opinion. Um, but postseason just means more. Like the postseason moments are going to be over that moment because I, I feel like I've said in the grand scheme of things multiple times in the past few minutes. But in the grand scheme of things, that win didn't really mean a whole lot. At the time, that I I think that's true and accurate. Um, I just. I wonder. I just wonder if you if it feels any different now that Ole Miss is the national champion. I think, I think it kind of does. I mean, it it's weird to say that, right? Because like both of the last two seasons, you can say, oh well, Arkansas has won the regular season series against both national champions. I guess it it means less this year, considering that Ole Miss went through Arkansas to win the title. But um, I that that walk off at, at the time was was really big it felt like it could spark a momentum change because because I mean it, it you could sense that the team was sliding I think that was right after they lost two out of three to AM. um and it just it things felt off the freshman comes through in the big moment it sort of powered them to victory the next day too I know Ole Miss was reeling at the time but I mean it's it seemed like a big series win that they just didn't really do anything with, you know? Yeah, because then they went and lost to Missouri State in the midweek. Um, they did go and beat Auburn the next weekend at Auburn. Um, and Kendall Which Blake, also felt, like, meaningful. Yeah, that, I mean, that was a big weekend when they beat Auburn because Auburn was a really hot team at the time. You felt like if Arkansas wins this, they've got a good shot at securing the West because at that – I think – wasn't that, like, whoever wins that series took over first place in the West, I think? Yeah, I think Arkansas led by a game maybe. So if they were to lose, they'd be tied, but Auburn would have the tiebreaker. Yeah, so that was a huge series at the time. Um, now, I mean, I agree that the Kendall Diggs walk-off was, was – I mean, it was just incredible. But um, I don't know. It's hard because at that at the time of that series, Ole Miss was like probably not even going to make the postseason. I think that they were struggling to make the SEC tournament. So right. um, that was – that was at the time not meaningful. And I think even if you look back, because Ole Miss has won the national championship, I still don't know if it means a whole lot because it was a complete different Ole Miss team, you know? Yeah. Uh, here's, here's another one. For you. Um, again, totally meaningless because it was in a midweek game against UCA, but the Dylan Leach game, five for five cycle, home runs from both sides of the plate. Where's that? <laughs> That's like I don't know, like fifteen. Uh, that I mean, Dylan Leach plays for Missouri now, Robert, and I think we all know why. I know. I, I mean, the we've only talked teams about it. that he hit against were teams named Central Arkansas and Grambling and Arkansas Pine Bluff. I I, I know. I, I'm we we've talked about it many times on the show before. It, he he never really found his role here. He was never going to find his role here. That's why he's gone but that's why you show up to midweek games but just yeah. in case something crazy like that happens. Maybe that means more to you because you were there. I, I was not there at that game. It was hard for me. That was a Tuesday night. Was that a Tuesday yes. game? Yes. Yeah. I, I couldn't make a single Tuesday night game because I had six o'clock class or whatever. I had a class that lasted from two o'clock to eight o'clock on Tuesdays. And so it was terrible. I hated it. I would watch games from the class but you know it was an interactive thing i had to at least pay somewhat attention so it was tough for me i to to witness that in person pretty cool it, yeah like i mean i feel like we always complain about going to midweek games just because they're pointless and they take four hours at least every time um that sort of made it worth it for me good Good for you, man. I'm I'm so happy for you that that was worth it. Thank um, you. As far as moments, I think we kind of hit the big ones. Um, maybe you could talk about – we could talk about down moments, but I don't know what that provides. I, I immediately think of like the the 5 nothing loss to Stanford and Round Rock, mainly because we were there and we made that whole trip and we were looking forward to that game so much and then Arkansas just completely crapped the bed. But, and it took forever – for that game to actually be played. Yeah. So that was that was a crappy moment. I think um losing the series 
at Florida and the series at AM. Those were two series that felt like Arkansas really should have won both of those as far as how the game threes went, you know. Um, and so those were two down moments. But I, I think, of course, the biggest down moments is the way you ended the regular season, losing to Alabama and then going 0-2 in the SEC tournament. I think I think getting shut out by that that freshman pitcher from Vanderbilt. Yeah, that was tough too. Yeah, that was tough. So let's uh let's get into season MVPs, guys that we thought were the most valuable players for Arkansas. I guess we'll do a pitcher and a, a hitter each, kind of like we did for weekend MVPs throughout the year. Um uh, do you want to go first, Robert? This is uh, it's tough. It's tough. You you go first. Okay. Um, I need to pull up the stats here. Okay. My season MVP on the mound for Arkansas. I think uh, I I don't want to I think the obvious pitch is or o- obvious pick is Connor Nolan. I think yeah. Connor Nolan it, at the end of the year, the two the two starts he had in the post in the postseason or in, in the college world series were incredible. The start he had at North Carolina was incredible. He he had a rough a rough patch there at the at the back end of the regular season, but he started the regular season really really good, and uh, I mean he was your ace throughout the year. He was the guy that you relied on. You could you could trust him to go out there and um, be your Friday night guy, and I think he filled the role nicely. And I think he's the obvious choice as far as MVP on the mound goes. I'll let you go ahead and do your MVP on the mound. Yeah, I would agree with that. I mean, there's, you know, start to finish, it, it was most definitely no one. You know, Dave, Dave talked about it in, in Omaha, but he, he he got tired, and the way he rebounded was incredible. Um, as, as far as my pick, I think it's got to be Will McIntyre, the way that he came out of nowhere. I'm a little surprised that you didn't go with your uh, 2023 Golden Spike winner, but. Um, I, I, I genuinely thought about it, but it, to, for me, it came down to Connor Nolan and Zach Morris. Those were my two guys that okay. I was fighting between. Okay. Yeah, I mean, McIntyre and Morris are sort of on the same, I guess, wavelength, right? I mean, they both sort of came out of nowhere in the middle of the season. Didn't really have expectations for either of them, considering that they hadn't thrown a whole lot in 2021. McIntyre at all in 2021. Um, for for him to to – do what he did, establish himself as a midweek starter, and then, uh, you know, work his way into the rotation when Wiggins started to falter. And, I mean, started to falter may be an understatement, but they needed a guy to fill that role, and McIntyre did it. Um, he was he was crucial in that win, that series win over Auburn that we just talked about. Uh, you know, winning the one game they did at Baum against Vanderbilt, that was – that was Will McIntyre coming out of the pen, holding things down. Uh, I mean, it was kind of like a start. It was the resumed game. Um, I mean, he looked good in Alabama. He looked good. At, he looked really good down the stretch. I'm trying to remember how much he pitched in Hoover and Stillwater. It doesn't feel like all that much. But you, you mentioned the two starts, the one in Chapel Hill and the one in Omaha. Just incredible stuff from uh, uh, a guy who was poised to win the 2023 Golden Spikes. Yeah. Um, honorable mentions. I think you got to talk about Evan Taylor out of yep. the bullpen. Great stuff from Evan Taylor. Um, of course, Hagen Smith. I mean, the way he ended his season, the start he had against Ole Miss in Omaha. Um, he, I mean, he was, he was great at times. He looked dominant at times, but then he had times where you were like, this guy needs to get out of the game right now. And it's the first inning, you know? And so right. that he was a guy. Um, I think those are your two honorable mentions, or my two honorable mentions: Evan Taylor and Hagen Smith. I don't know if you have anybody else to add because if you're talking about MVP, like most valuable, a guy that is valuable um, throughout the season, I think that we kind of hit them all. Unless you got someone else. No, I mean I would I would agree with that. I finally got my stats to load. You may have noticed my camera angle changed because my computer Wi-Fi cut up, cut out. Anyway. Um, uh, Hagen Smith led the staff with 46 walks and he had a 4.66 ERA. So like you said, he had his downtimes, but let's not forget he was 
all freshman team in the SEC, right? Yeah. I mean, that's not insignificant. He also got a USA Baseball Collegiate National Team invite to training camp. And, and from probably – According to my sources, he made the team and he got pulled by the coaching staff, him and Tiger. I was told that both of them made the team. I don't know how true that is. I'm not saying it's true. I'm saying that that's what I heard. And so I well, wouldn't we heard, believe it. We heard Van Horn say that they, they were both really worn down, right? So, that I mean, that sounds credible. And both, both of them were planning on pitching in the Cape Cod League, and neither is going to because they were tired. So. It, it seems credible. Yeah. Um, okay. MVP at the plate. Um, man, this one is uh, – I got to go with my boy Turner time. I, I figured you would. Michael Turner had a 323 average. That was second on the team, uh, 502 slug. I mean, he had nine homers, 53 RBI, 83 hits, which was a team high. And it just felt like every game you could count on him to get at least one hit. Like, he, he was the most consistent bat, in my opinion. I mean, like anybody else, he had his downtime. Like, he was not – he was not great at all times, but um, I think that he was the most consistent bat. I think that the way that he played in the postseason was incredible after the way that things were going after that CC tournament with all that drama. Um, and for him to come in from Kent State and do this at Arkansas, you know, a much bigger school, a much bigger stage, I think that was great stuff from Michael Turner. I think that he's the MVP at the plate. I would agree with that. Um, I mean, I, I'll have my own pick, but everything you said accurate. He had one of one of the most incredible postseasons I've I've seen for sure. Um, I feel like I've been riding with this guy since fall, so I got to go with Chris Lanzilli. Um, of course, it makes a whole lot of sense when he leads the team in batting average, uh, led the team in on base percentage. It looks like uh, Zach Gregory was the guy for the most of most of the season. Uh, he had a he had a tough finish to. Uh, to, to the College World Series there. Um, I, I do wonder where old Zach Gregory's going to end up next year. But, um, I mean, we we talked about it as soon as it happened, right? It, it never made sense that Chris Lanzilli wasn't on the field. It it never made sense. I, I mean, Caden Wallace, did Caden Wallace play every day? 67 games? 46 and 21, that's 67, yeah. So the fact that Chris Lanzilli missed eight games – I mean, they weren't eight midweeks, so that's ridiculous. That, that, that would be the only excuse for him to miss a game. Um, 11 home runs was fourth on the team, and he, he led the College World Series with three home runs. I mean, we, we talked to Matt Goodhart about how big that ballpark tends to play. He hit uh, – was it, was, it, was it Lanzilli that hit the, the ball so far to left that it, like, landed on the concourse? Yeah, that was him. He hit I the mean, ball. He hit the ball so far, like you. You might have been one of like three people in this world that stayed with that ball because everybody else lost it, including the camera guy. It went so far. I mean, I've I've never seen a ball get to the concourse, and and somehow it didn't even stack up to the four hundred thirty six foot bomb that Slavin hit to dead center. But, um, yeah, I mean that he he was incredible all year long. Um, you know, it, it, it always seemed like he, he was never the cleanest of outfielders and yet he played pretty much every day in right field and was very serviceable out there. Um, so, uh, that was, that was an example of a brilliant, uh, I guess another example of a brilliant transfer addition for Dave Van Horn, because, uh, you know, those two guys, the, the rental players leading the team and batting at two or five. <laughs> I think that we also need to have a third MVP because this guy is not worthy of an honorable mention. I, I think he deserves an MVP, and that's Caden Wallace. Hit 298, um, had 82 hits, which was just one less um, than Michael Turner, who led the team. He had a team high 20 doubles. He had tied for the team high 16 home runs. Uh, 60 RBI was the most on the team. He slugged um, with a 553, which was highest on the team. I mean, this dude, incredible. He's going to be – has a chance of being a first-round draft pick. He, he will probably be a top 40 draft pick 
definitely top 50 if if you had to ask me um i mean just an incredible ball player arkansas is very unlucky of, of his age that um he's going to be a draft eligible sophomore so you don't get that extra year out of him that normally you would but i mean Caden wallace it, he's just one of those guys where you're like that guy was so good at baseball that i'm just thankful i got to watch him for a little bit you know yeah for sure for sure i mean he it seems criminal that that somehow we left him off, but you know, it, you're right. We we got to throw him in there, and and he did so out of the leadoff spot for most of the year. Speaking of leadoff spot, uh, it, the this PDF that I'm looking at here doesn't show OPS, but if my quick math is right, it looks like Braden Webb led the team in OPS. How about wow. that for a guy who started 0 for 23, 24? Yeah, that's uh, that's pretty good for Braden Webb. I mean, he had 15 homers. Brady Slavens had 16. Wallace had 16 too. Yeah. I mean, one off the team lead uh, as, as poorly as his season began uh, for him, for him to turn it on the way he did. And he, and he had those like four or five, I guess it was four uh, lead off hits in Omaha. That was, that was incredible. Yeah. You got to, you got to talk about Jalen battles too. At one point he was hitting over 300 and this was late in the season um he had in, in the world series i think okay I, I didn't know that but what i do know is that Jalen battles made himself some money by coming back this year I, he was he was an elite defender at shortstop last season that's what you knew you were getting out of him he needed to prove that he could do it at the plate and i think he 100 percent did that i mean i i tweeted during i think the second to last game maybe savor every single Jalen Battles web gem because we're all going to miss that. I mean, it's just, just so smooth in the field. And, you know, we, we always talk about him being one of the most clutch hitters on the team. I mentioned the Grand Slam earlier. He, he always, not maybe not always, but he generally finds a way to deliver when, when his team needs him. And, I mean, if, if that's not the quietest 289 hitting season you've ever seen, I don't know what is. Yeah, no, I agree. I agree. I mean, and and also, you just look at it for from a Jalen Battles perspective. I saw this the other day. It wasn't very long ago that Arkansas had a shortstop in Casey Martin that every time the ball was hit to him, you were just hang, hanging on to the edge of your seat wondering if he was even going to field it, and if he did field it, if he was going to make a good throw to first. With Jalen Battles, you never worried about that. And so y- you Arkansas fans are spoiled – with Jalen Battles, and so you just got to hope that the shortstop next year, whoever it ends up being, will be even half as good as Jalen Battles was because Jalen Battles is as big league as it gets when it comes to a college baseball shortstop. Absolutely. Okay. Um, I think that that's, that's our goal was to get, you know, talk about big moments through the season, talk about, you know, MVPs throughout the season. We're going to have two more episodes. <laughs> Um, one MLB draft. We're going to talk about the guys that get drafted. Um, we'll do that. And then two, we're going to talk about the recruiting class, the newcomers, as far as transfers and freshmen go, we'll probably have coach Kevin Bohannon on for that one. And, uh, both of those will probably come. So the MLB draft one's definitely going to come after the draft, of course. Um, and then we'll, we'll do the recruiting one after that too, because I feel like some of these guys that Arkansas is on and that are probably going to commit to the hogs won't commit until after the draft. So that's something that we got to wait on. And uh, I think that's it, Robert, you got anything else to add? Yeah. I mean, we, we talked about hitting on the stuff from the press conference yesterday, but you can just watch the press conference yesterday. I mean, there's the, there's, there's stuff we want to talk about, you know, new transfers and stuff, but right now there's only three guys coming from the division one way ranks, he was only uh, Van Horn was only able to, to speak on one of them. So there's, there's not really much to say right now. Um, but again, you can check out our coverage at hogbeat.com for more. Yes. Go to the, uh, the hogbeat YouTube. You can find that press conference there. Or if you go to hogbeat.com, I've got a story where I basically just took all of his quotes and put them in a story. So if you want to read it, you can do that. If you want to watch it, you can listen. It was like 40 minutes long, but uh, it, it's a lot, a lot of good stuff in there. So. Um, with that being said, thank you for listening to the Diamond Hawks podcast, and we will talk to everybody after the MLB draft.
You've been listening to the Diamond Hogs Podcast. Follow the guys on Twitter at Chote Mason and at DRStew32.